Hello. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install OpenBSD, uh, which is a free Berkeley Systems distribution operating system. They say their efforts emphasize portability, standardization, correctness, proactive security, and integrated cryptography. Uh, it's really secure, minimal, etc. Uh, so you can go to their download page. Um, you want the install xx.img, and I'm doing the AMD64 architecture, which you'll probably want as well. It's a really quick download because it's really short. Um, but there it is. Um, and then to well, first of all, you'll want to find out the USB device you're installing to. So you can do sudo fdisk-l before plugging it in. I have a lot of devices right now. And you can see all the different devices that are connected. Now, uh, I'm going to plug it in and run it again. So I've now plugged it in. If I run that command once more, uh, the SDH device appeared, which wasn't there before. It shows the device model and whatever. So if we go back to the install guide, um, it says to use dd, the disk utility, uh, input file equals the install file. Output file equals the device name. Um, on GNU Linux devices, that will be slash dev slash sd, and then a letter name. Uh, and bs block size equals 1m. And you can use the capital M uh, on GNU devices as it says here. So I'm basically just going to copy that. Well, first let's change into the download directory. Uh, list the files. Then you can, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, luckily it's prepended by a comment. So we can do that, that should work. And then we can do slash dev sdh. Um, and then one with the capital M. Otherwise, they'll have an error. Uh, you may want to put in the Axable install file. And of course, you'll need to run it with root permissions. So if you're on GNU Linux like I am now, just pretend that with sudo. Um, and this will take a bit, so I'll pause the video. Um, but just now, if you're on other devices, it'll be a bit different. Normally, you can use something like Etcher to uh, install things, um, but I'm not sure if you can specify the block size on that, which is important to this one. Uh, regardless, well, if you're on BSD, it's also a bit different, but if you're on BSD, you should know how to operate devices. Anyway, I'll pause the video now. Okay, so we've got our BSD flash drive all loaded up. And now we're ready to install it on the system. Let's plug it in. Uh, then you can turn it on. Now on this ThinkPad, uh, use the Think Vantage button at the default boot. Uh, I actually recently reverted to the default BIOS because um, OpenBSD doesn't support Core Boot. And in order to do that, I had to install a GNU Linux system. Uh, which I'm now replacing with OpenBSD again. Uh, so you just choose the USB HDD. Um, and don't type anything, just let it do, it, let it do its thing right here. Um, give it a second and it will just uh, do this thing. Sort of like the system D boot or any other init system. But the OpenBSD one looks like this. And it will look like this every time it boots, unless you change it, I guess. 
Now, even though this is a, it could be considered a more quote unquote elite system than Arch or Gentoo, its install is actually much simpler because it's uh, basically all auto automated. I guess you could do A for auto install, but I've never tried that. Um, but I'm just gonna press I to install. Do the default keyboard layout, uh, which should be US, I believe. System host name, that's whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna call mine Exodus. Um, now it asks if you want to set up a network thing. You can save this for later. I'm obviously not connected to any network or anything. Um, and by default, it just has Ethernet, apparently. Um, I actually need to install a different internet card, Wi-Fi card, than the one I have in, because there are no supported drivers for it. Uh, but just the Intel ones seem to be widely supported. Now, the DNS domain name, uh, if you're just using this as a client desktop system like this, uh, and it won't be connected to the web with a domain name, this doesn't matter. OpenBSD wants it for some reason, though. I'm just going to do x220, but you could do, like, .com or something if you wanted it to be a uh, internet-connected device. Now, for name servers, in this case, you can also do none. Now, I'm going to pause the video while I type in the root account, and when it says will not echo, it just means it won't show you what you're typing on the screen. After you put in the root password, it'll ask if you want to do SSHD by default, which is the daemon for a secure shell. This will allow other devices to remotely connect to it. If you're doing a headless setup, or even a desktop, or a web server, obviously, you'd want to have this set up so you can connect to it remotely. In this case, I do not want to start automatically, because I don't want people connecting to it. And if I want that, I will manually turn it on myself, when needed. Now, it also asks if you want the X server to be started automatically by XenoDM. That's the display manager it uses. It has some security benefits over pure, plain start X. Uh, so I'm going to say yes and have that uh, start automatically. Now to set up a user, I'm just going to put my username. You will want to do this. You don't want to be just a root account. Uh, I'll leave the full name at that, and I'm going to pause it again while I put in the password. So it now asks um, which disk you want to install it on. If you only have a hard drive for this and the USB slash CD or whatever plugged in, you'll want to do SD0. That's normally the main device, but if you put in a question mark, it'll tell you like the size and name of the disk. Um, in this case, it's still SD0 which is the default, so I can just press enter. Um, now, I want to do the whole disk, so I'll put W. Um, or wait, yeah, whole disk, master boot record. That should be good. Uh, and I'll use the automatic layout. Uh, if you're a nerd and you have a specific layout you want to do, you can figure this out should be pretty simple. Uh, so now it asks which disk you want to initialize. You don't. You shouldn't need to do this. I think it's asking like if you have another thing that you want to get mounted automatically when it turns on. In this case, no. So just press enter. Now you have to install the sets. Uh, on the ISO, I mean IMG install file we downloaded, it comes with all the sets, which have, well, I'll show you in a second. It has all the software, basically. Um, we're not doing HTTP, because we're not internet connected. Just do disk. Um, it's not mounted. And then press enter to do SD1, which is the USB drive. Um, and then say A. Uh, just do the default, that should be it, and press enter again. Now it will show all the sets. Um, we're going to do all of them, uh, which is recommended for beginners, and it's just a good default anyway. So we can press enter, 
all of those ones are automatically selected, but you can follow those instructions to change it if you want. Now it says it doesn't contain the signature file. Just type yes to say you want to continue regardless. And it, it will just be installing all the things right now. I will pause the video while it does that because it might take a bit. Okay, so it's only been a couple minutes and it's installed all the things necessary. The base is the, that seemed to be one of the longest things. Um, yeah, that's the only thing with megabytes. Um, but yeah, now that's all the sets. So we can just press enter because we're done. Now it asks the time zone. Uh, you could do question mark for list, um, in case you don't know. Uh, I know, okay. Wait, what? Okay, I think I accidentally uh, said Canada slash mountain, but I guess that's fine. If you're in the United States, you just do like America slash Eastern or something along those lines. I will now pause it once again until the next prompt appears. Okay, so it just took a couple more minutes, and it says, Congratulations, your OpenBSD install has been successfully completed. When you log in to your new system for the first time, please read your mail using the mail command. So now we can just press enter, and it'll reboot. Uh, and I'll show a brief demonstration. Let's take out the USB drive. Uh, I'll show a couple things you'll see by default. Uh, so we see the same screen that was on the USB drive. Uh, and this boot um, screen. This takes like a minute or less. Uh, yeah, there. And just some more stuff. And there you go. This is the glorious OpenBSD login screen. I can just put in... Oh yeah, by the way, you press tab to move to the next field. And then you just press enter. And you'll log in. You've got... Oh wait. I know what that was. I'll do that again. But now you have the console log right there. We log in, here we are, uh, the glorious FVWM window manager, looks like it came right out of the 90s, um, it's not a tiling window manager, but it's really easy to install DWM or something when you connect to the internet, but that's not what this video is about. Uh, you can search for stuff in man pages with man k so I can do like man k Tetris or man k RCCTL. Uh, by the way, you can put in keywords and stuff, it doesn't have to be the name of the thing. And we can just do man RCCTL, and it gives lots of extensive information, and nearly everything you'll need on the inf on the system is well documented here. Uh, and just for fun, I'll pull up Tetris. And the BSD controls are a bit weird by default, but um, hey, it's Tetris. So anyway, that's how you install OpenBSD. I hope this video was helpful.